Okay, so for our first folder, you need two pieces of lightweight chipboard that are eight by eight. And I mean, this is lightweight. So literally, if you've got cereal boxes, if you've got light, lightweight chipboard, great. If not, cereal boxes, cracker boxes, that kind of thing will, have, will work. You need two pieces eight by eight. We're gonna wrap those with two pieces that are 10 by 10 and then cover that with two more pieces that are eight by eight. These need to be just a hair under eight by eight so that they're not hanging over. So we will trim these down just a touch once we get these actually covered. For our spine, we need one piece that is eight by four. I'm gonna set that one aside as well. And then we're gonna have stacked pockets. The bigger, the larger back pocket is gonna be nine by seven. You need two of those. The smaller front pocket that we're gonna cut a frame into is gonna be nine by five and a half. Again, we need two of those. And then we need a piece for our closure that is gonna be eight by five. And then two pieces of acetate that are three and a half by six and a half and I've got these I've left the tissue paper on here just so you can see them and so I don't lose them <laughs> because otherwise that is exactly what will happen so I'm gonna set those aside now because we're working with lightweight chipboard I don't want to try and wrap this like I normally would because it's not gonna work it's gonna the chipboard's gonna bend it's just gonna be a mess so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 10 by 10 piece we're gonna score it at one inch on all four sides. Okay, we're gonna do that with both 10 by 10 pieces. corners on this like we normally would. Actually, I think we're going to glue these down first. Before we do that, let's glue these down. So your chipboard should sit right up against all of those score lines. Um, I am going to glue this down as opposed to using score tape. because I am trying to line this up in between everywhere I've scored. That way it does give me a second or two that I can actually move it. And we're gonna burnish on the back. And that's gonna help spread that glue out so that we don't have any glue lines. And then we're gonna cut out our corners just like we would wrapping it normally because we are gonna wrap this just like we normally do. We're just not using the chipboard itself to bend the cardstock. Okay, so that's gonna bend over that way. That's gonna come that way. Okay, so that one's ready to get score tape and glue the rest of that. In the meantime, I am going to glue down our other piece of lightweight chipboard. score lines. We're going to turn it over and wipe that glue that dripped. Okay. 
Okay. And then we're going to cut out the corners again. we've scored that you can easily just fold that up and over and that's ready for tape okay so just like we normally do So let's go ahead and burnish all this down. And then we'll go ahead and pull the backing off of our score tape. Just like we always do, I'm gonna do our glue. Get our glue along the chipboard. And then underneath where we've run the score tape. Okay. And clearly I didn't check my mitering before I started folding and gluing because I've got like three ugly corners here. But that's okay. Easily fixed. All right, so let's go ahead and burnish this all down. Get the backing off again. We're just gonna do the same thing again.
and then and I should have checked my mitering before I did that that was dumb I'm getting ready to do the same thing again so I'm going to very carefully since I didn't do it beforehand just kind of check and see what needs trimmed here much easier if you do this beforehand <laughs> for the record that was not the smartest move but that's okay all right all right so we're just gonna same thing again you're gonna run your glue along the chipboard and then in that space where we don't have any tape got our two pieces got our two pieces that are going to cover those and so I'm just putting them on here and I do need to take just a hair off so I'm literally only going to take maybe a sixteenth of an inch off on both sides or well on top and bottom literally that's how much I took off. Much better. All right, so with these, I am going to glue these as well. over that make sure we get that glue nice and spread out so we don't have any glue lines not that I've had too much of an issue with that between the combination of the artisan cardstock and the art glitter and really I mean that's you know that's good just one second Sure, that's just the neighbor kid looking to see if my son's home. Nick's not home yet, Emmett. Okay, talk to you later, buddy. Just gonna get that centered up top to bottom all right so there's our front and back of this folder I'm gonna set those aside for right now and let's do our pockets the last thing we're going to do is the spine because if you wanted to, you could add flaps, you could add other pockets, you could add quite a bit on here and you want to make sure that you're leaving enough space on this little spine when we do this so that, you know, we're not making this too tight, we're not making it too loose. 
okay that makes sense so we'll do that piece very last but for right now we're gonna do our pockets so our back pocket nine by seven with the nine inch side at the top of the scoreboard and score it half an inch turn half an inch again turn half an inch I'm gonna do this on all three are then going to miter our top edge and we're going to miter across the corner okay okay so whichever side of this that you put your cover piece on this is going to be the inside okay so I'm going to go ahead and get my first set of pockets down in large part because we want to check that they're not too wide when we get them on here edge to edge and that's fine if it was too wide you're just gonna cut a tiny bit off and redo that score line but you should be okay okay I'm gonna start down here at the bottom with just my bottom flap of my pocket tab that is not flap okay make sure that one's good and down and then I'll come in and do my sides going to start on the bottom Put our glue on that tab line this up all the way at the bottom okay and then we'll do the sides pockets Get those away out of the way again for our frame pocket we're gonna score these are nine by five and a half we are gonna score half an inch on each side edge just a touch 
then we're gonna get that entire corner on the bottom. Okay, so now before we go any further, I am going to take my rule, ruler, I can't even talk today, <laughs> and a pencil as soon as I figure out where it went, and I am going to, from the score line, so over here, and let me mark my, so you can see where it is, since we will be folding it. Be fine. Okay. So you can see where my score lines are here. Okay. So we're going to come in one inch from that score line and then a draw line. Same thing on the other side. And it's easier for me to just turn the whole thing around rather than trying to reach across myself to. Do that. Then we're going to go one inch from that score line on the bottom. And again. And then one inch from the top of the pocket. Okay. You're going to do this on both pieces. And we're going to cut out that center section. So let me go ahead and get the lines on this other one really quickly. You have a couple of choices here. You can do this whoops, with a craft knife and a ruler. You can try to do it with scissors, which can get messy, or you can do it with your paper trimmer. I am going to do it with my trimmer because the Fiskars one has that little wire in here that you can kind of line up where the blade is going to cut. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to cut. just where of course keeping in mind that you don't want to go through past your lines that you drew. Okay. And if I don't have it quite all the way, then I am just going to take my little scissors and last tiny tiny bit that I didn't get with the trimmer. Oh, and I missed an entire side apparently. Oh my gosh. help wouldn't it okay so you could save that erase your writing off of it use it as a tag or something okay we're gonna do this on both pieces
Okay. That one I did get a little bit closer. So there we go. Okay, so your opening should be three by six. that what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my score tape and I am gonna use three eighths so wherever I put my there they are my acetate I'm just gonna dry fit this and make sure I've got about actually no I'm not using the three eighths I'm using the quarter you should have about a quarter of an inch of overhang from on the acetate onto your pocket so all I'm going to do, for that matter, if you wanted to make these into shakers, you could, but I'm not. Are you surprised? I'm surprised. I do shakers all the time. <laughs> I love shakers, but I'm not doing them on this one. In part, because I really don't have any shaker fill that I think matches my paper well enough. And just, you know, to make this be a somewhat easy project. Burnish all that down. Okay. And then wherever my hook went, there we go. We're going to go ahead and get our backing up. And if you want to do just on one side and get this positioned and then put it down, that would be probably a good idea. <laughs> okay, so I'm just lining this up and burnishing it down. I am leaving my tissue paper on there for now, literally just so you can see where that acetate is sitting. Okay, so this one I do actually need to erase where my score lines are. So depending on how you drew your lines to mark where your frame needed to be, you are going to want to erase those. Okay. All right. So we grab one of our pages and we are just going to fold and burnish the tabs for our pocket. start with the bottom tab like we did before. And I'm going to put this all the way to the bottom. And just like before. And then do the sides. sides down. Okay, so there's one side. Let's go ahead and do our other side. And again, wherever I've lost my eraser, I'm going to go ahead and erase my lines. And the reason we're doing the acetate on top is because you're going to mat around it. Okay, and with it on top as opposed to underneath, when you go to take things in and out of your pocket, it's not going to catch on that acetate. Okay. So again, with the score tape right up to the edge of that frame, we're just going to go around. Oops. Thank you. 
going to show you something here in just one second. So, you'll notice you can see our score tape, okay? I'm not worried about that because when I mat this, I'm not going to leave a border around the inside of this frame. I'm going to mat right up to the edge. In fact, if I wanted to, I could go slightly over the edge because you're not necessarily going to know that. And you're going to see whatever it is we put in behind this. So it's fine if they're, you know, if you're seeing that score tape, because the way we're going to, the way I'm going to map this, if you don't want to see the score tape, then you need to cut your acetate to four by seven instead of three and a half by six and a half. And then you would put your score tape a quarter of an inch out from the edge of your acetate so that you don't see it around the edge there if you if you wanted to leave a border when you mat the front of that pocket okay so let me grab my other one again i'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish and the other reason for leaving the, that tissue paper on the acetate is that it's not going to pick up every piece of dust in your work area because <laughs> that's what it does and it's not going to get scratched it's not going to get dirty you know and where that acetate does, or I'm sorry the tissue paper does just kind of cling to the front of that you know because it's staticky then that just helps protect that piece of acetate until we're ready to mount come over and over all right so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna stack these together and I'm gonna see how much of a gap we need to give them I'm gonna give these a half of an inch so we're gonna take our little spine piece here and we are going to score at one and three quarters and we are going to score at two and one quarter that's going to give us our half inch there okay remember our spine piece is eight by four i'm just going to go ahead and erase my writing off of there so i don't forget but before we attach this what we want to do is we want to make sure that our spine isn't taller than our covers. So again, same thing that we did before, I'm going to take just a tiny, tiny sliver off of this. So, I mean literally, that's like a 32nd of an inch that I just took off of this. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to get a wider piece of score tape. And I'm just going to put it on the ends. white to my score line but close much like how we would normally do um, our spine on a normal book you don't want to go right to that scored area but you want to get close okay all right I'm gonna fold up one side 
I'm going to pick a side to start with. Okay. So this is how we're going to do this. Whoops, sorry about that. I didn't realize I put something down on top of my mouse and caused it to do something weird. Hopefully not for too much of this, just in case. So I've got our four by eight spine piece. We have scored this at one and three quarters and two and one quarters. I've got three eighths inch score tapes on either side of my half inch spine, okay? I folded one side and when we go to attach this, we're just gonna use that spine as our stopping point, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, get my Or tape off of there. Get my glue on. Okay. Making sure we're holding it the right direction. We are going to just center this up as best we can without sticking it to the wrong place because that would be bad. And there we go. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to go ahead and fold our score line. Okay. Get our backing. help grab it immediately but we want the glue so it holds forever okay so on this one you want to make sure you're lined up side to side so that this is even in fact it's probably the easier way to do it stand it up line up your sides and then push it over. Okay. All right. So there's our first folder. How cool is that? We do have a closure that is going to come from the back around to the front. This is eight by five. We're going to score this with the five inch side at the top of the scoreboard at one inch and one and a half inches, okay? And again with this, this is gonna be the same thing. We don't want this to be taller than our actual folder, so I'm gonna take just a sliver off the edge of this, okay? I'm gonna fold it over, and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go down on this back side, okay? Same thing, I'm just going to put a piece of score tape just to make sure it grabs immediately. And glue. And attach this to the back. Okay. And then it will wrap around the front. What we need to decide is if we're doing any kind of border punch you know, angle cuts, whatever, on the edge of this, of this piece, okay? I'm not sure what I'm going to do on this yet, so I'm not actually going to attach this just yet until I decide what I'm doing on the edge of that piece, but this will attach onto your back just like the, um, the other piece did, or this, the spine pieces did. For closure, you can add a magnet in here. What I'm going to use is some of the seam binding that I got with the collection, with my package. 
but because I'm not sure what I'm matting this with yet, I'm not going to put this down yet. Okay. What I am going to do, however, so that I don't forget, because I will forget, <laughs> is I am going to take and put my score tape down where that ribbon needs to go. Okay, which I will need to adjust if I end up um, using a border punch on that, but I'm not honestly sure what I have and that's why I'm waiting. I may end up running that through my Gemini with one of my Edgeables dies instead, but I need to look and see what I have. Okay, so that's our first folder. We'll go ahead and finish this up once I figure out what I'm doing on my closure as far as the edge. But other than that, it's done, ready to go.